what we do on social media. For Facebook, my page is Dr. Uloma OJ World Outreach and Faith Giants. For Instagram, it's Apostle OJ. We have a 24 hours WhatsApp prayer line platform. You can be part of that and you will join us plus 234-80584-66101. Our YouTube channel still remains Fake Giants Fellowship Online TV. Twitter is Apostle Uloma. Our website is www.visionlove.com. Jesus must be famous. Show up for you. 
And the action point was um, that we take practical steps to reposition yourself to work with God, develop a hunger and a test for God. The summary of this message for the second day is God is reopening a new chapter in your life. So it doesn't matter the impression you came with from 2020. It doesn't matter what, um, what, what the heartaches were, but God is starting afresh. We see that in the scripture that was given to us from Isaiah 43, 19, that um, you too have to renew your mind. God will not be ready to work with you and start with you afresh when your mind is still in the old, old mindset. You also have to give yourself an opportunity to start afresh and take some practical steps to repositioning yourself to do a new thing. If you want to do something new, you might have to destroy the old one, right? You will not want to do something new and you still have some, you don't, you, you, you want to sew new clothes, you want to, you want to change your wardrobe, then you might need to give away some things. That's how it is practically. Just do some practical steps, take some practical faith and do some new things to accommodate uh, the new you that God is about to bring out in you, right? And then the third day, the three, still the topic, new beginning. And still the same scripture, Isaiah 43, 19. The message here says, a new beginning is an opportunity for something bigger and better. God has given us another window to improve on the quality of our lives. The reality of a beginning is an indication that the old is phased out and, and no longer relevant. Every new paragraph requires a new beginning for us to experience a new phase of life. We need to change our approach to doing things. In other, in other words, we need to do things differently. And the action point here said, cultivate a new habit to be a plus on your life. Praise the Lord. So basically, the summary of this day three is similar to what we had for the previous day, which also says, do something differently. Cultivate a new habit for a new thing, right? You just have to come up with something new. Something new. If you want something new to happen in your life, then, I mean, you, you need to do away with um, some old practices, right? You need to do away with some old you, some old mindset, old initiatives, old steps, everything that will not take you. I mean, there's a regular saying that if you get the same result at all times, you might need to do something new differently. So if, if you've been doing the same thing over and over again, you always get the same result. But because you want to do, get a new result, this time around, you will have to embark on a mission to doing new things. Now, the day four also has to do with new beginning, part three. We, we still have the same scriptures, Isaiah 43, 19, as a, the same anchor scripture. And the message has said, your perspective determines your outcome in life. Whatever you cannot visualize, you cannot actualize. In the nearest future, where do you see yourself? It is imperative you cannot feature in the future you cannot picture. Let me take that again. You cannot feature in the future you cannot picture. Until you see what God wants to do in your life, it can never be a reality. There is one thing that I have personally learned this year. There is a new me that has emerged. Like I see myself being very deliberate with my thought pattern. Like um, there are some things that I used to do that I used to perceive and conceive in my mind. But this time around, I have been really deliberate about what, what crosses my mind, what passes my mind. So whatever it is that crosses my mind, I am I, very deliberate about it. I try to filter it and what is not supposed to be there, I discard it immediately. And what is supposed to be the content, I retain it immediately. I mean, that's a step forward for you. What is that new thing, that new plan, that new big future you're looking at? You may not be where you want to be, but you can picture where you are aspiring to be. That's a summary of this day four uh, um, study. Currently, you may not be in the picture of where you are trusting God to be. But in your mind, that's why I'm very deliberate with my mind pattern, my thought pattern these days. In your mind, where do you see yourself? In the next two, three, four, five years, where do you see yourself? I mean... Be deliberate about it. Picture yourself in that plan. And not just picture yourself in that plan. Be deliberate about what comes through your picture. And when you do that, I mean, God takes you there in speed. And the prophetic prayer said, Lord, help me to see beyond the ordinary into the um, invisible realm. Praise the Lord. Day five. Hallelujah. The 
fifth day in January, still new beginning. And um, we still had to deal with Isaiah 43, 19. And the message said, until you let go of the past, you cannot enter into the new. What lies ahead of you is much better than what lies behind you. It is abomination to celebrate past glory when you can bask in the new realm of glory. Forget about past events, whether positive or negative, because you can yet break new grounds and take over new territories. The action point said, forget about those things that are behind and focus on those things that are ahead of you. Praise the Lord. Now, even if you had so much wins last year, the previous years, and um, all the other years, do not settle in celebrating those wins because you're yet, your, your best is yet to come, right? Your best hasn't come yet. And you can't just settle in celebrating the wins. And even if you had failures and losses, you cannot also settle in wallowing and sorrowing in the losses forever. The Bible said, forget about the past. So this year is a time to move forward. It's a time to change your, 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 your thought patterns entirely, like I said earlier. So it's a season for you to capture new things in your mindset, capture new things in your imagination. And that's what basically this fifth day message was talking about. What's the new thing you are thinking? What's the new um, positive wins you are aspiring? Don't settle for the past wins and losses. Don't celebrate the wins forever. I mean, you have the, the next phase of the wins and successes that God is bringing your way. Why not focus on the next successes that God is bringing your way? Hallelujah. Day 6, January, we also talked about um, the same scripture, New Beginning. And then, this same that to, uh, um, scripture that we've been working with is the same thing. And here we say that um, experiencing a new beginning in a different dimension, part one. Experiencing a new beginning. Um, and God said, God Almighty is a God of a new beginnings. His declarations and acts in the scriptures have shown us how in countless ways he has promised and manifested new beginnings. God is the initiator of new things. Our responsibility is to receive and maximize the openings. That is a new phase of life, marriage, birthing, children, retirement, a new opportunity or open doors, job, businesses, career, contract. Make new and viable contact and relationships. Praise the Lord. So, the summary of this basically is to tell us that you should take a new step and make new moves. Um, see yourself in the affair of making new friendship, new relationship, plan towards new things. I mean, just go, go to a place you've never been to before, if it is possible. Take a trip, treat yourself right, do something new for yourself, have a different mindset, what you've never done before, it's time to just embark on it. Guess what? Even if you fail, I mean, it's okay. Just feel like, um, I mean, I, I have not done this before. I could just fail and all of that. Nope. Just try. Even if it's a new contract you have, you get, I mean, it doesn't have to be something you have an idea of. You just get a call and someone is giving you a new contract, a new opportunity. Guess what? Take a try. I mean, you can't be wrong altogether. Like I said, even if you fail, Trust me, you must have learned one or two lessons from me. Thank you very much. That was day six. We'll be breaking to you day seven. Thank you. Be part of what we do on social media. For Facebook, my page is Dr. Uloma OJ World Outreach and Fake Giants. For Instagram, it's Apostle OJ. We have a 24 hours WhatsApp prayer line platform. You can be part of that and you will join us plus 234-80584-66101. Our YouTube channel still remains Fake Giants Fellowship Online TV. Twitter is Apostle Uloma. Our website is www.visionloved.com Jesus must be famous. Alright, and we're back for the day 7th 
And um, the seventh day in January, the topic also was experiencing the new beginning, part two. Again, we are still working with the scriptures, Isaiah 43, verse 19. And the message was, when something new happens to you, you will know it and other people will witness it. Hmm. God specializes in bringing new things. <laughs> he makes a way where there seems to be no way. That's a new beginning to the stranded. He makes crooked paths straight. That's a new beginning to the confused and those faced with difficulties. He changes status from single to getting married, jobless to gainfully employed, healing to the sick and oppressed, etc. Now, there is nobody who experiences a new beginning that is not visible. I mean, even the blind will get to know about it, the deaf will understand that something new has happened to this person's life. I mean, you see a thin person who obviously loses weight and becomes slim. You see a very visible transformation in somebody's life. I mean, gifts of um, getting married, it's not hidden. A woman or a man who was not married suddenly becomes married. That's a very tangible um, testimony and change. Now, this is the new beginning. This is the kind of change and experiences that God gives. God is specialized in giving us changes that everyone sees and notices that there is something about this person. A change that you cannot hide, even if you are trying to package it. I mean, God is specialized in such a, 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 a project. And in this season of new beginning, he's just out to bless us with those kind of testimonies. But um, the message here is we have to position ourselves to receive that new beginning. Now, day eight, strategic planning. Strategic planning, we take our scriptures from Luke 14, 28 to 30. I think that again, Luke 14, 28 to 30. For which of you intending to build a tower seated down first and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, lest happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. All that behold, it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. The message says, A wise man said, Failure to plan is planning to fail. Nobody can achieve anything but well without having a strategic plan for implementation. Until you have a robust plan, you cannot make headway in life. You can build a touch house without a plan, but not with a duplex. A man that wakes up in the morning without a plan, someone can send him on an errand that has no bearing to his assignment. Basically, this is a message to you and I. 2021 January is a season to plan. I mean, I saw somebody's goal for 2021 just a few days ago. The person has practically, in fact, his 2021 is booked. Yeah? His 2021, his weekly goals, he has highlighted everything for week one. In January, this is what I will achieve. Week one, day one, week two, day two, day three, to the seventh day. He did that painstakingly for, um, I mean, all the weeks in 2021. How amazing that could be. Some people are that detailed. Proper planning. Now, let me tell you, the success of that plan is not when you have it 100%. The success of that plan is for you to plan and start. At least make an effort in what you have planned. So just sit down and take a plan. The scripture here says, no reasonable man, no sane man embarks in building project and does not sit down to take a course. Now, if you don't sit down and you just wake up one morning, call the surveyor, survey this land for me, call the architect, give me the drawing plan, call um, the engineer, okay, let's start the foundation and you too, you will get to a certain stage where you will be stopped, trust me, because you did not do a proper plan. But if you plan properly, I mean, you would definitely finish well. So that's the message for us in 2021. Let there be a proper planning for your life, for your career, for your spirituality, in every ramification of your life, do a proper plan. It's still early for you to sit and plan. Don't say we're already um, um, half January gone. No, just sit down and do a proper plan. And trust me, your 2021 would end well. And um, the prophetic prayer for day eight was simple. Lord, help me not to live an aimless life. So sit down and have a daily, a weekly, a monthly, and quarterly plan if need be. Now, on the 9th of January, the Palace of Budgeting. Hmm. 
Now, I call that palace, but it's actually the place. Now, but you know, when it's the palace, it's, it's the kingship of budgeting, part one. Um, we'll still look at Luke 14, <clears throat> 28 to 30. For which of you intending to build a tower seated, knocked down first and counted the cross, whether he had sufficient to finish it, less happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold, he began to mock him, saying, This man began to peel and was not able to finish. In order to effect or implement any project effectively, it all begins with an effective budgeting system. Without a budget, it is practically impossible to succeed in your plan. Budget helps to re regulate your spending habit. Without a budget, there is a tendency you acquire things that you don't need. Budgeting helps in regulating your expenses and enables you to stick to your plan. The action plan here says you need to discipline yourself to stay with the range of your budgets. Praise the Lord. Now, this is a different dimension of plan. This has to do with your budgeting. You cannot start a building project and you don't have, that's why we, we have quantity surveyors who, who starts your plan and gives you a cost of what you are likely to spend in the cost of your building. It may exceed that, it may not even be up to the amount they estimate for you. But the point is you have a budget of what you would be spending in mind, right? You cannot also embark on a journey and you don't budget what your transportation fare or your airfare or whatever fare would be like. At least you'll have a clue of what you're likely to spend. You may not spend up to that, you may even exceed your budget. But the point is, at least you have a clue of what you're likely to spend. That's what 2021 is all about your budgeting plan. You have to come up with a plan for budgeting for yourself. Now, if you are this type that is a spendthrift, you have to come up with a saving culture. You have to just budget something. Just have a proper plan. Have a proper financial plan. Have a proper budgeting plan to help seal you through 2021 effortlessly, right? And the action plan, action plan says you need to discipline yourself to stay within the range of your budget. Very key. You know, it's one thing to drop a plan, a budget plan. It's another thing to discipline yourself. Some people have um, a local word is Kiko saving box, right? Some people have that saving box, but they just can't discipline themselves. Like they have to break it every day. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Dear friends, the bottom line here is self discipline. Yeah, budgeting is one thing, but your self discipline has to supersede that budget. We look at the part two of that. Place of budget. Same scripture, different message. What budgeting does is to help you align to your set goals. It also regulates your spending habits without a budget. You will fall victim of reckless spending that leads to a life of regret and lamentation. A prudent man always sticks to his budget structure. It saves you a lot of headache. Hmm. Make it a habit to always put pen to paper to regulate your spending habits. I want to really tell you that, I mean, budgeting every penny, it's, it's a wise thing to do. It's wisdom. It's safe to say that a man that leads a life of budgeting and planning would hardly run into penury or lack because he has a plan for every couple. I mean, you just don't wake up and then you hear, if you don't budget your finances, if you don't budget your spending, you would spend on irrelevant things. And at the end, you achieve nothing. It's a wise thing to do to budget. So take a, a, a proper seat and plan your 2021 in proper budgeting. Monday, 11th of January, the, the, the topic was um, a fisher's mentality. A fisher's mentality. Right? A finisher's mentality. A finisher's mentality. A finisher's mentality with the same scripture, a different message. Now the message says, the beauty of starting a thing is in the finishing. How well is that said? Always cultivate a finisher's mentality. Don't imbibe the abandoned project mindset. It paints a picture of irresponsibility. Wow. Wow. I like to say that again. The beauty of starting a thing is in the finishing. 
So this means that it's not to start, but it's to finish. We have a lot of abandoned projects in this country. We have a lot of abandoned talents in this country. A lot of people, they are good in starting, but they are not good in finishing. This year, if it means you picking a prayer point, a special prayer point, in fact, sowing a seed. In fact, I think I'm also speaking to myself, right? Yeah. If you need to take a serious step to engage in the finisher's anointing, friends, please do that. Don't start what you cannot finish. <laughs> it paints a picture of irresponsibility. Don't live your life to impress others because that's always the problem. That's one of the problems that leads to um, not finishing. Because you want to impress others. You want to do what others are doing. You want to start and let them say you were doing something. Not because you had passion for it. Nope. Do not do things beyond your capacity. I take that again. Please don't do things beyond your capacity. And otherwise, you will kill yourself before time. When you work on achieving something one task at a time, it helps you achieve an unbroken focus. You know what? Just take one step at a time. Just remind me of this old song. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's what I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to do everything that I have to do. Yes, to this God, sweet Jesus, but all I'm asking from you is just give me the grace to do everything what I have to do. That should be your prayer point this year. The grace to do exactly that one thing you are supposed to do. Not here, 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 here. Nope. Just the grace and the strength from Jesus to do one thing one day at a time. And finish it. That way, trust me, you will finish it. Day 12. And the topic was a life void of mockery. One step at a time. Do not engage in an unhealthy competition. The only person you're in a competition with this year is yourself. Say to yourself, as you're listening to me, call your name. Say to yourself, you're in competition with yourself. Soki, you are only in competition with yourself. Yeah, I'm in competition with myself only. In competition with no one. That way, you would only strive to become a better you, right? So. Don't try to do what others are doing. You want to impress them. You want them. You want to be heard. You want people to hear or notice you. When you do that, you are just you're just hitting the wrong target, and you're aimless. So hit the right target, one day at a time. Praise the Lord. Wednesday, the thirteenth January, the thirteenth of January, I bring to you the message for thirteenth of January, and it says a life devoid of excuses a life devoid of excuses then and the scripture is Matthew 25 24 to 25 and I read then he which had received the one talent came and said Lord I knew thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not destroyed and I was afraid and went and hid my talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Praise the Lord. Matthew 25, 24 to 25. Great men take responsibilities while weak men give excuses. You don't have any excuses under the sun not to succeed in life. Your background shouldn't put you back on the ground. No matter what life throws at you, if you are determined, you can make a headway in life. From a reference scripture, don't imitate the person who got just one talent and gave excuses for not making profit. Excuses are the burial ground of great potentials. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Excuses are the things that have sent great potentials to their burial grounds. This year, embark on mission, no excuse. Say that again. Mission, no excuse. Say to yourself, in fact, if you have to draw your ear, draw your ear, say to yourself, 2021 is a mission to no excuses. 
no excuses. You see that man in the scripture, it's a familiar story. I mean, that's why some people have to believe that the rich will always get richer and the poor will remain poor. Sometimes it doesn't look like it's a prayer. It's just a mindset because sometimes the mindset of some people, I mean, is what has affected them. Those that God blessed with five talents, they multiply it, make good use of it. But those who had one talent, imagine him, I mean, coming back to give Jesus excuse. He said, I already knew that you were not going to, I mean, this, that. You can start giving stories, please. Embark on mission, no stories this year. Say that to yourself. Whatever it is you have to do, do it. Don't let your flesh keep you back. Don't give yourself any excuse. Oh, I'm not a graduate. I mean, if only I had um, the credentials that is needed. I mean, if only I had these ideas. If, if only I had people to help me. If only, if you only, if only, I mean, uh, with the little you have, start. Do you remember the story of the boy with five fishes? With, uh, uh, with bread? I mean, there is a song again. Words that you have in your hands, I can use it. If you're willing to lose it, take a little you have and make it clean. Cause I am El Shaddai, and I will more than supply your needs. All Jesus wants is that little you have in your hands. Imagine that that little boy didn't have that fish or bread. Imagine that he didn't let go of that little. Just imagine, we would not have this story. Jesus is asking for that very little you have in your hands. The little idea, the little certificate, the little credentials, the little opportunity, the little time, that little income, that little to start. Just present that little to him. It's better you have a little than have nothing. I mean, he's working with that little. Thank you. Part of what we do on social media for Facebook, my page is Dr. Uloma OJ World Outreach and Faith Giants. For Instagram, it's Apostle OJ. We have a 24 hours WhatsApp prayer line platform. You can be part of that and you will join us plus 234 80 Our YouTube channel still remains Faith Giants Fellowship online tv twitter is apostle uloma our website is www.visionlove.com jesus must be famous okay and here we are again the 14th of january the topic is stewardship requires faithfulness and um the scripture is first corinthians 4 2 Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. One of the yardsticks for promotion in life is faithfulness. People that rise to the zenith of their career in life are traceable to faithfulness. <clears throat> it is unfortunate that in Christian faith today, instead of faithfulness, what we see at times is faithfulness, which is commonly known as eye service. If you are not diligent in doing someone's job, scripture says, who will commit your own to your hands? Let's endeavor to give our best in discharging our duties anywhere God plans us. Action point, we are giving an assignment. Give it the best shot. Praise the Lord. It is only wise that we give it the best shot in all our activities. Faithfulness is what takes a man to the zenith of his career or his life, his path. I mean, show me one man that has attained that, uh, um, the zenith and the peak of his life in all sincerity, and I'll show you a faithful man. I know someone who, who once won a contract just based on faithfulness. I mean, he didn't even know the person who was giving him the contract. Someone else told him, do you want somebody who will carry out? I mean, they, they told the contract, they told the man who was awarding the contract that, there are two options. Do you want somebody who wants to be very faithful in discharging your duties and give you exactly what you need? Or you want someone who will make money and, you know, make you, you know, the regular politicians and their contractors. Do you want someone who will play along with you and just make you feel like, uh, yes, you're doing something when you're actually not doing the general thing? And the man said, I generally want to do this job. I want a, a, a faithful 
person who would execute this project. And the man said, don't. Because if you want either of these, I have them. I have a faithful person I would recommend to you. Who would take this job to the Zenit? I mean, who would give you a sincere job? I also have the other type who will take your money and play before, you know, the people that they are actually doing something. But in sincerity, they are mixing ordinary water and cement for you. And then he said, I want the genuine one. And this innocent man was rooted out from working for us. He said, we are recommending you based on faithfulness. Aren't you um, um, going to, would you want to be that kind that we recommended for faithfulness? Faithfulness is what takes a man far. Day 15 says, responsibility, accept it. Accepting responsibility. Matthew 25, 21, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Great men accept responsibilities, while weak men give excuses. Which category are you? To be great in life, you must accept responsibilities for your life. So Winston Churchill said, responsibility is the prize of greatness. In the parable of the talents stated above, the person that got five talents traded with his and got a hundred percent dividend. And that added to his life. To not accept your responsibility is to diminish the quality of your life. Action point. Build the capacity to accept responsibility in life. One of the most terrible things that can happen to a man is when you don't accept responsibility. Some people are very good at blame games. Too good at blame games. All they do is she blamed. Ah, why did this happen? It was because of this. Why did you do this? It was because of, I mean, they are very professional in blame games. It is very difficult for them <clears throat> to sit back and for words, just say, wow, I'm sorry, this was a mistake. Like, I made a mistake. I did a terrible error. I'll do it. I mean, some people are so used, I've seen a man, he's so used to blame games that even when he does something wrong, because he's very used to shifting blames, the one that you saw him doing very well, now, let me go bring it closer. This person lives um, in, my ha in my family, right? And then, because he's too used to blame games, he's one of our family friends, like a relative. And then, one day, we just saw him opening the door, and I think Buddha kept the door open. And then he just got home and started quarreling with his children. He just got back, and he came out from the bedroom and passed came to the living room and then he started quarreling with children. We were all there. We were there when he passed, opened the door. Like we felt maybe it was a deliberate thing or something. In fact, it's so bad that the student can set trap for him and say, what? Daddy will come back and still blame us for this thing. And behold, he fell. This particular day we were in their house and then he just passed, opened the door and kept. When he came out of the room again, he started shouting, why did you open this door? Call one of his first son's name. Why did you open the door? Why did you open the door? And they all looked at each other like, and they like, and we now were like, ah ah, uncle, you are the one that opened this door when you just passed a while ago. Eh, are you sure? And then when he left, the children, children, and my friend and my auntie was like, I told you, he's always too used to playing games. Like he never does anything wrong. We are always the one who does things wrong. In this house, everything goes bad is us. He never does anything wrong. I mean, some people are so used. So, like I'm telling you this story now, some of you can actually relate. You can actually relate. This is the story of a family friend. You may have somebody like that in your family as well. You may have somebody like that in your place of work. You may have somebody like that around you, amongst your sphere of influence or something. It could even be you. Check yourself. Why are you so into blame games? Why can't you accept responsibilities for once? It helps. You know, one of the dangers of playing blame games is when you actually make mistakes or when you're actually in the midst of those who know better than you, they can't help you. And you can't learn anything from them because you already know too much. You already will not accept fault. Even if they try to correct you, there is no need. You won't learn. So blame games keeps you stagnant. It makes you not to grow beyond a certain limit because you don't want to learn. Day 16. Benefit of accepting responsibilities. The responsibility we talked about, the benefits. Same scripture. As we read in the parable of the talent, the person that accepted the responsibility and traded with the talent given to him by his master after he received a 100% dividend. 
he received more responsibilities that brought about an exponential increase to his life. So some of the benefits of accepting responsibilities could be um, increase in the quality of your life, lifting and promotion, and of course it brings about commendation. I've already said that a man got a good contract job based on recommendation. A job he didn't bid for, he didn't contact. I mean, he didn't. He was not even in the big job. Somebody just appeared and told him, "Do you actually want a sincere man to handle your project? If you want that, I know somebody. Where, in fact, he's not even in the sphere of our influence. He's not even in this state. I will bring him down." And they transferred. They they they, they went all the way to him, caught this man just because of sincerity, faithfulness. And I've also told you that when you play blame games, blame games is when you are not accepting responsibility. It keeps you stuck. But when you accept responsibilities, I mean, the blessings are enormous, like what we just read here. It cannot be overemphasized. So go extra mile to make an impression. Accept responsibility. When you make mistakes, accept it. You know, this was one of the reasons why God loved David so much. And he gave him a special name, the man after my own heart. David committed sin like every other regular man. He was not a saint. I mean, if you want to name saints, David couldn't have even come in the picture because he did so many atrocities. He killed, he committed adultery, he did a lot of things. You know. But like we were taught in Sunday school children class, those days, the difference between David and every other regular man was the accepting responsibility. David always accepted Whenever God cautioned him, or whenever he was called or revealed to that, ah, you have moved. David would fall on his heels and cry to God and say, ah, Baba, why wouldn't I make mistakes? Am I not human? Maybe it was in error. My mother created and gave that to me. Accept me again. Here I am. And he kept doing that over and over. And that was what captured the heart of God. The fact that he always submitted and said, yes, so, ah, this one is me. I own up. I did it. I'm sorry. Let's start afresh. And then the willingness to go over again. The 17th benefits of accepting responsibilities, part two. Same scriptures. Like we read um, previously, benefits of accepting responsibility cannot be overemphasized. When you accept responsibilities for your life, it has the capacity to open doors for you among men of influence and affluence. One other benefit of accepting responsibility is that it helps to institute your potentials for greatness. It opens you up to new frontiers. Let me tell you, there is no mentor that is comfortable around a mentee who knows way too much or who always acts like he knows too much. There is no lecturer that is comfortable around a student who, who always acts in the capacity of knowing too much. You must always be willing to learn. So, when you accept responsibilities, you are that man who is willing to learn and start afresh any day, any time. Whenever they tell you you make mistakes, accept willingly. No excuses. Just start afresh. Learn not to turn down assignments, even if it's not convenient. That's one way to accept responsibilities. 18th of January, build capacity. Part 1. Proverbs 24 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. <laughs> I love this scripture especially. So when you see me react like just taking me to my own path. Like this is one scripture that you know those times of oh, seemingly depression, sad mood, sorrow moments, you know, those moments where you just feel like you're just a little bit down. You don't just look at me like that. I mean we all have those moments, right? We all have those moments where we just sit down and you feel like ah, oh, like as if um, you're down in spirit, you're down in your mind. This scripture always comes to my mind by the help of the Holy Spirit. Like, if you fail in the days of adversity, your strength is small. So it reminds me that, see, you cannot afford to faint. The songwriter once said, You cannot afford to faint in the face of those trials. You have come so far to drop all over again. You cannot afford to faint. So you need to build capacity. And the message says, when you are not able to measure up or handle the challenges of life, it is a pointer that you are deficient of capacity. 
Situations in life make some people cry while others laugh. Why are some people succeeding while others have the same atmosphere as suffering? The step to building capacity is to recognize the need for it. Identify the area you need to improve and be intentional about it. So you cannot afford to faint in the face of challenges. Instead, let there be a, a, a new wine that comes out of it. I mean, God is specialized in changing every kind of ugly sorrows or ugly situations to a very beautiful story. Build that capacity of changing an ugly situation to a beautiful story. 19th, January 19, part 2, building capacity. Proverbs 24, 5. A wise man is strong, yet a man of knowledge increases in strength. A wise man said, know something about everything and know everything about something. In other words, be interested in knowing things that happen around you, but be versatile in your specific area of assignment. That way, you cannot be found wanting. One other way to build capacity is to be knowledgeable. The level of your knowledge determines your degree of your exploit in life. Develop an insatiable hunger for knowledge. Read relevant books that, um, that will aid your assignment. I know a man, wow, that man, that man, that man, he wows me in a very special way. This man is a surreal. But there is hardly nothing he does not know. When you need bring medical discussion, is grounded. You bring politics, is grounded. You bring engineering discussions, it's good to go. Spiritual discussions, what, I mean, what area do you want to talk about that he, he lacks behind? Nothing. He's so versatile, so versatile. And sometimes when I ask him, like, sir, how did you know all of this? That like, no discussion takes you Unawares, like every discussion, you always have what to talk about. He said he reads practically everything. That in his house, those days you can you you that he does not trash piece of papers anyhow. He will pick up everything and read because he believes that everything is relevant. Like he reads newspapers, he reviews them back to back, and there is no normal person that will do all of that on a daily basis. Will not be versatile. Thankfully, I mean. We may not be in the era of um, handed newspaper again, but thankfully, I mean, technology has made life so easy. So we are almost on internet with our phone. Information, news pops up, I mean, intermediately in your phone. Just take advantage of everything. Read everything and anything. I mean, Google is my best friend. Like, after myself, after Jesus, me, the next very close friend I have is Google. That's why. I don't like to stay out of data <laughs> because I would always want to Google out everything to say that I do not know. Like I just quickly before you know it, I have gone to Google. I want to search everything and anything. God bless those that that invented Google. So it is it is a season for you to read up and study up everything and anything. Just get to know the new things you have not known before. I mean, even if it's a word language so just in fact you know what just tell yourself you're on a mission to learn one just one new thing on a daily basis for 2021 give yourself that goal and at the end of the day just sit back and ask yourself so what did i learn today what new thing did i learn today you would know you would just get to realize that before the end of one month or even one week you must have learned so much just too much and when you are grounded and well prepared. You can stand before anybody. Anybody. The Bible says a man who is well prepared, who is diligent, can stand before kings and men. Not men. men. That's it. January 20th. January 20th, building capacity part 3. 20th of January. January 20th, building capacity. One of the major ways to build capacity is through personal development. You have to live with the mindset of improving yourself on a daily basis. A wise man said, when you stop learning, you start dying. How do you develop yourself? By learning, attending conferences, keeping viable relationships. Um, iron sharp met iron. Take stock of your life and improve on the areas you are lagging behind. So, 
mingle with people of like minds or who are even better than you. A wise man once said, if you're hanging around 10 intelligent people, you will be the number 11th one. If you're hanging around 10 wealthy men, you are the 11th wealthy man. If you're hanging around 10 wise men, be sure that you are the 11th wise man. And of course, vice versa. If you're hanging around 10 foolish men, you are the 11th foolish person. You don't want to be categorized in that area. Hang around people who will improve your life. Look for stuff that will improve you. Make a conscious effort in this year to improve yourself. Thank you very much. Be part of what we do on social media. For Facebook, my page is Dr. Uloma OJ World Outreach and Fake Giants. For Instagram, it's Apostle OJ. We have a 24 hours WhatsApp prayer line platform. You can be part of that and you will join us plus 234-80584-66101. Our YouTube channel still remains Fake Giants Fellowship online TV. Twitter is Apostle Uloma. Our website is www.visionloved.com Jesus must be famous. Alright, day 21, 21st day in January. Benefits of building capacity. We're still talking of building capacity. Proverbs 24 verse 5. The worst man is strong here. Um, a man of knowledge increases in strength. Same scripture. Spirituality without a robust mentality is catastrophic. When you are a man of capacity, you will be in a high demand. Men will go out of their way to look for you. A story was told of a professional tailor that specialized in sewing native attires in the village. Because of his expertise, he was invited by the presidency during the tenure of former president Obasanjo. That alone revolutionized the life of this village tailor. Be good at what you do. Always give it in the best shot. It's a very simple message. You see that one thing that you have in your hands, that just one talent. Even if you don't know how to talk like I'm talking now, right? I like to talk a lot, not to come out. Talk well. Just be best at what you do. That one thing you know how to do, do it very well. You know how to preach, preach well. You know how to sew, sew well. Just that one thing. Be expert in it, it will announce you. It's going to take you places. Even if that's what you would specialize doing this year. I mean, just go on a mission of expertise in that one thing. Not too many of that one thing that you know how to do. Learn how to do it first. 22nd January, the force of diligence. Proverbs 22, 29. See as thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. There is no way a man can be totally sold out to his primary assignment and not make progress in life. The absence of diligence is the reason for the life of insignificance. Men that have made great impacts in life are well products of hard work. Any man that is committed to a curse in life cannot go down. Give life the burst of your shot and it will bring you to prominence in life. Maintain an unbroken focus in your assignment. Don't allow anything to distract you. Praise the Lord. Um, the prayer point here was, Lord, help me to give life all it takes to get and it contacts I mean it's still the same thing be specialized in what you know how to do best that thing you can do please do it first allow that thing to announce you be expert in it 23rd January the force of diligence part 2 same scripture your work is your worth in civilized clans the value merit or result over connections in nations Across the world, you don't need to have a godfather before you get what you're going for. It is your competence that will announce you and bring you before the corridor of power. Keep the peace, pace of hard work. One day it will bring royalty. Never relent in your effort. One day it will catapult you. I mean, in um, in um, I mean, civilized countries, what announces you? What brings you forward? What brings you to the, uh, the topmost is your excellence, your expertise, your details, your diligence. It's not when you have Godfathers. It's not 
uh, when you have godfathers, godmothers, people up there, but when you can do it rightly. The pursuit of excellence in um, January 24, part 3. Daniel 6, 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the ex-president and princess because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. The spirit of diligence is what will give you an edge in our dynamic and competitive world. Daniel was preferred above men of diligence and influence in his days because he operated with the spirit of excellence, refused to settle for a life of mediocrity. A life of excellence is what will announce you. This was the case of Daniel. Daniel had an excellent spirit in him. There are some people, I have worked with two different people that I have seen that they are very detailed in life. And that has automatically transformed my life. Like, I mean, it could, it could just make me, honestly, like before now, I used to be that person, provided I've done it, I'll just feel like I've done it, it's okay. But having worked with these two people in the past, it made me pay attention to details so much. Like, it's not just to do it, but do it neatly and rightly done. Do it in a way that it's appetizing to see, right? That should be your focus this year. Raise the bar, January 25th. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Daniel 1 8. In your quest to pursue greatness in life, it is imperative that you raise the bar. In other words, never you compromise your standard for any reason. Those that do things anyhow get an anyhow result. Never you settle for less. It is a wise thing for you to do yours in a very uncompromising way. It is not because you want excellence, you will not have to, comp to, to compromise to overtake others or to get their word. I mean, don't compromise to the standard of the world. You are a believer, you are a child of God, do yours to the glory of God. That was what, you know, brought Daniel out. Day 26 January, terminate your rent. Terminate your rent. Ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you not well. Deuteronomy 2 3. It is about the time you terminated your rent in your comfort zone. If you form the habit of always renewing your rent in your comfort zone, you can never enter into the next phase of your life. Even in the case of Abraham, God said to him, See, he couldn't have attended greatness in life if he didn't let go of some things. Keep moving and let go of some things. It is time for you to terminate that rent new renewal in that comfort zone. Be dissatisfied with your present status and aspire for greater height. Like I said earlier, if you get the same results at all times, it is time to take a new, a new strategy so you can get a different result. January 27th, aim higher. Aim higher. Philippians 3.14, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. Until you press to hit your mark, you cannot amount to anything worthwhile in life. Be disciplined to keep the rules of engagement. If you want to achieve, aim higher. Let your thinking, your prospect be this ambiguous. Let it be this big. Let it be this robust. Just keep aiming higher. Keep going higher. You may not be there. Just keep going higher. I'm going higher. Yes, I am. I'm going higher. Yes, I am. Just aim higher. Right? 28th of January says, lay aside every week. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, lay us, let us lay aside every weight and see which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. A weight is anything that slows you down in the race of life and destiny. Weight and sin have the capacity to cripple your destiny. Deal with every form of weakness you may be dealing with in secret. One other ingredient you need to is the Hit the mark of the virtue of patience. It is only you that can hinder yourself. A weight can be in different form. A weight can be seen. It can be a terrible habit. You heard me right. Your weight can just be a terrible habit. Your friends. Your weight can be anything. Anything that is not just making you move forward. 
Your weight can be your prayerless life. Your weight can be just that, that constant mood of depression. Guess what? Your weight can be a life of ingratitude to God. It can be anything. It can just be a terrible habit. Check yourself. What is your weight? Lay aside that weight this year. Let go of that weight. Move forward. 29th of January, the heart cry of the Father. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The heart cry of the Father is for us to worship him in clean vessels. So many worship God today with a polluted vessel. One of the guarantees our worship to God to be acceptable is for us to present ourselves as living sacrifice. Until we operate within the partnership and the perimeter of that we cannot tap into heaven's resources for our life. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. How do you present yourself as a living sacrifice? Continue to renew your mind and ask the Holy Spirit to renew your mind. The Holy Spirit is the renewer of one's mind. Once you renew your mind, you're conscious of every step. And that way, when your mind is renewed, reformed, and aligned with the Holy Spirit, you would always present yourself as a living and a clean vessel of the sacrifice before God. January 30th, mind renewal. You see? We're just there. Mind renewal. January 30th. Second to the last day, January. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. Conformity with the world system leads to deformity of a lifetime and is an enmity with God. Mind renovation is what leads to life transformation. Our lives move in the direction of our domain thoughts. One of the catalysts for mind renewal is the word of God. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. As we behold the mirror of his word, we are changed to God's image. Align your mindset with God's word. That is what will renew your mind. Let there be a continued renewal of your mind. The Bible said, let this mind be in you as it was in Christ Jesus. Let there be a continual renewal of your mind. And align your mind with thoughts. With the word of God. 2021, make it the goal not to go a day without a verse of the word of God. January 30th. Ah, we're here. Hallelujah. Mind renewal part two. And it's the same scripture, but different word. The quality of your thoughts is what makes you a high flyer in life. One of the pivotal force for mind renewal is centered on our thought life. Think only for those things that are praiseworthy to live a life of worthy. Refuse to think on chunks and the deliverance. You know, I told you earlier when we started that one of the things I have had to do with the help of the Holy Spirit consciously this year is sifting the chunks from my thought pattern. Like, I am now very deliberate about my thought pattern. I don't just want to think of anything that is not relevant because it crosses my mind and I would first of all scan it like is it supposed to be here? What where is this headed to? If it doesn't do anything good for me, I mean I discard immediately. Quick. So be very intentional about your thought pattern. It will help you your mind with what you're thinking. You know how I came about this? I realize that there are some times you want to pray and you, maybe you're just praying in your mind. You just want to say some silent and unsaid words. And you expect God to listen to those unsaid words and hear you and act. You know that there are still sometimes the nasty things crosses your mind and you think God will not see those ones. If he can hear the unsaid prayers that you did not speak out and you expect him to answer. Trust me, he also hears when those those unsaid jumps and irrelevant and ungodly thoughts crosses through your mind. The 
reason why you have to be deliberate and see what is your thought pattern in 2021. Thank you so much, viewers. It was so nice and amazing spending time with you to review our giant seed for January 2021. See you again next time when we come for giant seed review for the month of February. God willing, and I trust God that He will be willing. It will be an interesting time again with you. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. God bless you. Please ensure that you do everything that we have done. Except. And please, giant seed is a blessing. Guess what? I love this so much because it's one of the devotionals that have blessed my life. You know one thing I love about it so much? It's so brief and very, 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 very on point. Like, it's not boring. It's not long. You can do this even while working. You're on your way to work. You don't have an excuse. You can't say it's too long. I mean, it just drops the point and it sings. Those few lines of words resonate very well. You know, there is this belief system that, I mean, the longer the sermon, the boring it becomes. But this is so scripted and it resonates well. So you just can't say you would do it. Trust me, it is absolutely free. That's the amazing part. What else? What else do you want? Amazing. How else? I mean, apart from the fact that it's well scripted, it resonates well, it's free. So free. Just make an order for it. Go to our line. Just go on there and click. Make an order. Trust me, you'll get it. You want it soft copies to any part of the world, we'll send it. You want it hard copies, we'll send it to you. Thank you so much, friends. It was amazing spending time with you. See you again next time when we come. Bye for now. Part of what we do on social media for Facebook, my page is Dr. Uloma OJ World Outreach and Faith Giants. For Instagram, it's Apostle OJ. We have a 24 hours WhatsApp prayer line platform. You can be part of that and you will join us plus 234-80584-66101. Our YouTube channel still remains Faith Giants Fellowship online tv twitter is apostle uloma our website is www.visionlove.com jesus must be famous